I mean, there's a lot of acts. I mean, that, that I've spoken to about you guys, and 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 I think you you know when we talk about pioneers of music or people that that, that that did something kind of special, I think Enjoy come into that department. I mean, it's not just uh, because, you know, I mean, again, it's not just one track or it's a whole host of tracks and a whole host of, of, of different things that, I mean, you, you created a scene or was part of that scene. And I think that's the thing that, that makes... Um, enjoy so special because and, and the fact that it, it traveled across the atlantic i mean you know that there was one-off rave tracks that we can talk about that were big massive tracks at the time mm. but but the the act or the dj or the producer that made them never followed up with anything else or perhaps they never did the live gigs but i mean the live gigs enjoys live gigs were were almost uh, legendary in the club scene at the time I mean, people spoke highly of what you guys did on stage. I mean, and, and even that, you know, at the time technology wasn't what it is today. So, I mean, that must have been challenging for you guys. I mean, with the floppy disks and all the things, but, but still to create a show and create something that people would say, well, you know, you, you must see Enjoy Live. I mean, who, who, was, who was behind all that? Who was putting the show together? I, th I think the difference between, um, you know, the us and a lot of other, like these, you know, one-off records you heard is that we were essentially, you know, a band first and foremost. And we kind of, you know, were thinking about the show. about the show you know whereas someone wants to make a record and put that out and scene they'd go to a studio they'd be an engineer and they'd put the record out and that'd be a one-off record and when they were thinking about how are we going to sort of promote this live you'd see someone just get up on a mic and it would be nothing special something you've seen before but we were always thinking about the show and the people we were bringing in saffron you know matt and dancers we we had they were all show oriented. It's also the way the, the music we put together. We, we, me and Nigel used to spend ages driving around in a car with tapes where we'd have one track going into another and, and trying things and different. And it, it was from so eight o'clock in the morning till two in the morning every day in the studio and putting putting these live sets together, wasn't it, Nigel? If you remember, yeah, a lot of, it was, a lot of work. It was, um, and, uh... Yeah, so it, it, it took a lot of work, but we it, it's not work because we love what we we're doing, but um, that's you know it didn't just happen it was, no, like, it was, it was always work. changing and we had like um you know a, a 45 minute live set which was forever it was playing in the studio and we'd like you know take out a sequence and try something new and be changing that around and we we're always sort of like there were loads of tracks which never made vinyl but we were taken out we're just tried out live some of which are coming up on a forthcoming record hidden gems which i think i can mention now but uh um and you know it it was always um just you know constant work and constant effort and rehearsal really you know we were rehearsing in during the day and it was making sure it was watertight you know so so we, we it was uh, you know, an effective show all the time um, yeah behind every successful thing there is always a driving force and and it seemed perhaps from what you're talking about now yourself and mark um the driving force was was obviously all of you but especially your brother nigel i mean so how, how did um what challenges did he have at the time trying to break you guys because i mean you, you you were unique you were different it was a it, it was something that that wasn't you know the sharon and tracy thing it was completely underground and to make that become I'm not saying using the word commercial very very carefully here but you know it went commercial into the respect that it is top of the box it mm. is going on to that but still then reverting it back to an underground thing I mean, what challenges did he have trying to break you guys? I think, um, you know, business and, and what to do 
in terms of uh, uh, how to promote us came quite naturally to Mike. And, um, you Mike, know, he, Mike was always someone who loves a challenge and he's, he's not the normal cut of guy. He, he likes edgy things. So anything that's uh, a challenge or anything, he, he loves things like that. So I, I just thought I'd, I'd very outspoken. Yeah. yeah, he was very outspoken. You know, you get on the phone and just, you know, go get a. Um, you know, but we've got what we have to remember is the scene and, you know, wasn't there wasn't like these great big festivals that are all, you know, no. arranged and there's, they're regulated and all that. So this, these were sort of like cutthroat things run by gangsters, you know, they were, no. you know, there were guns on tables. There was like, you know, if you're picking up money, that was a nerve wracking situation. It was cash. It was like, you know, that they were, they were the challenges. It was a very different scene. I don't think people quite realize that nowadays, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was uh, very interesting. If you think back, back to it, it's obviously the subject matter of many films, you know, yeah. but um <laughs> I think, um, you know, he handled things like pretty coolly, really. Um, and hence probably got the attention of, of Prodigy and uh, they were, you know, neighbours in Essex kind of thing and were the next band that Mike took under his wing and uh, to, 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 you know, to great success. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's incredible, though, that, that, that you know, I, I tell this story quite often, but I was over in Miami with my kids and my wife and on holiday and I was walking down South Beach and a truck pulled up and a few guys came out with a PA system and they started to rap on the back of a truck and uh, with a PA system and you know within minutes there would be four or five hundred people in a semicircle around this truck and after they finished the track they started to sell some CDs and I went up and I spoke to them and, and they had a hustle. And, you know, I was amazed by it because I was sitting there going, no one in the UK would do something like this. No one, no one would go out there and hustle like this and, and try and make this, you know, just take it to the street like that and, and yeah. that bold uh, format. And the guys were saying, you know, what we do is we just go from one side at, across to the other side. He said, we, we might sell a hundred thousand CDs uh, in, in the next, you know, few months, whatever. And, 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 and I'm sitting there going, this is incredible. You know, that, that, you know, they're not waiting. They had no, I mean, I think they're living hand to mouth, but as you say, it's that hustle and that drive mm. that uh, someone like your brother that, that creates a lot of the success because with, with all music, it needs that platform. And to create yeah. the platform, you know, it, it's almost needle in a haystack, especially in today's world where it's iTunes, Spotify, Net, you know, all this kind of thing. So, so I mean, what's your view on the current music industry? Because, I mean, obviously back in the day, it's vinyls, it's music shops, it's, it's almost a social scene going to buy a record. Mm. What, what, what's your view on it today with the digital distribution? Kind of <laughs> learn to accept it, I guess, it is what it is, you know, and uh, it's, it, I didn't love it to start with, um, you know, just sort of cheapened everything. I mean, it's, e but... it's easy for up and coming artists to finish their records off and get them out there and uh but because it's easy it means it's saturated as well so yeah. uh you know it, it's one you, you gain in one way but you don't you, but it, um, you don't in another really but um that's why we've decided to come back out with the uh, you know vinyl again you know just because it's it's i think suits our music basically at least to start with and then we're probably not going to be foolish enough to ignore the streaming side of things. That's kind of obviously going to be after that. But I think first come, first served on the vinyl when we release it next week, isn't it? On the 24th? 25th, yeah. 25th, yeah. Um, so, so, so tell me about this new track. Well, is it a one song or is it an EP or is it an album? It's or, an, it's an album. It's on um, Shadow Child's label, Food Music. Um, I've got a copy sitting here so I can show you. Um, this is what it is, can you see? Yeah, it's wow, it's, and it's um, it's it's a triple um, white vinyl album. Let me just get it out. So, can you see that? Very nice indeed. Love yeah, it. And Love it's it. A triple, and it's ten tracks, and it's um, basically it's the best of 
the Enjoy Past Tracks remasters, um, reprogrammed, and uh, yeah, it's called uh, collected, basically. isn't it? It's called collected, it's called collected because they're the tracks that people have collected over time out of the Enjoy catalog. They've become significant in some way or shape or form. So we we um, yeah, um, Shadow Char basically. Uh, and his label um, approached us about doing doing something, and, and he was. We've had many labels approach us, to be honest with you, but they were the first label that we felt really got us as a kind of electronic band, as such, and uh, and felt us uh, and looked at us in the same way as that we sort of like would like to believe that we're still a portrait, you know, and understood in, and um, yeah, and and initially it's going to be great. Initially, it's going to be on the 25th and then it's going to be just on this white vinyl. I think there's a, um, a, a limited amount on white vinyl. Then it will go on to black vinyl and then streaming will come after that point. But at first, for the, I don't know how, how long for, but it's just going to be on vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the first of um, a few releases with with uh, food music. Um, yeah. So we've got, um, as I say, these um unheard enjoy tracks which were again made a long time ago but have been um painstakingly Revamped. recreated with um the same gear that was used back then pro and in some instances programmed on old mpcs uh but uh, remastered basically that's the next stage and then after that that we're going to be doing uh, some some new material so it's kind of like um, clearing, up been clearing up the past if you like and uh you know feeling like br bringing the, the past stuff in a new format to a new audience as well you know the new generation because there seems so to be just great interest from them as well you know so is, is this is this you guys completing the journey that you you as as you saw it basically back in the day yeah, yeah in a way make available we'll all, the best of our old tracks Release yeah. these um tracks that never got released so that clears up the whole past and yeah. then from that point on we can draw a veil on that and then it's the the new stuff yeah which, so uh, where can people where, where, where can everyone buy the the the, the, the white vinyl and the, the limited on edition band where... camp, on band camp so that'll be uh enjoy a uh, band camp or food music but um food music is going to be the label for all, all this material so uh that they are um the hub really to go to yeah amazing amazing and so and what so what about the new songs then i mean i mean what, what what are you guys thinking in the way of not not giving the game away but what what are you guys thinking about as in positioning the new stuff that you're making now uh are you going to stick to the roots of enjoy are you going to change the sound or have you got ideas have, for that it's going to have a much broader sort of like soundscape and obviously like with you know both evolved as writers and done loads and loads of various different music over the years and they're influenced by lots of different things but i think it was what's the new material is going to boil down to is you know do we like it or don't we and if we like it and we feel like it's going to have a thread of enjoy relevance then then it could be an enjoy record we tend to collect a lot of and make a lot of music before it gets reduced down to what we think can be released so um i think the the new enjoy material will go through what we call the enjoy sieve which is uh, basically mark and i you know deliberating between what you know we think is good good enough for for release is it electronic is it kind of you know is it saying something different do we like it uh if it, if it you know ticks all the boxes on that criteria i think we it will it will probably see the light of day if it doesn't it won't so what happens with the enjoy sieve if 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 nigel you want the record out you're thinking this is this is the absolute nuts and 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 mark's sitting there going no nah, i'm not feeling uh, you know our tastes, are, our tastes are pretty similar yeah we kind of like like the same kind of stuff um there might be i'm more one way he's more another way but um generally we come to you know an amicable de de decision yeah and uh you know we we both do different projects so if, if if there's particularly something that nigel might like or i might like we could always you know shoot that off to different projects really but uh, i but think as well i think like the same stuff if you if you create something it's surprising how quickly you can forget about it so if you create it and just leave a certain amount of time to 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 pass you can yeah. look at something really fresh and go actually mark was right about that 
uh, let's leave it or or mark might listen again and and he might go do you know what actually that's got something so i think we when we create something we're very hot-headed at the time at the time it's not great to speak to us on the day we've made something it's it's not best it. if we just leave it for a little bit and then we can both be objective yeah i mean i mean what's interesting as well i mean i was going to ask you guys i mean i understand you have both worked individually with other people etc and you've both done other projects as well but i mean for from enjoy's point of view i mean you know when you look at other electronic groups have maybe collaborated and featured other artists or done some kind of collaborational work and, and, and so on and so forth. Is that something that you guys have pushed away or is that something that, that you feel that you've been, you know, you, you are open to or is that something that you're closed off to? I think with vocalists, that's where we would like to get some collaborations going because the, the music side, we kind of got pinned down, really. So I think it's more to do with collaborating with vocalists and rappers and that kind of thing. Um, and when we first started, um, you know, a lot of the bigger bigger artists, and all that, it, it wasn't such a big scene. So nowadays, a lot of the big dance actors, you know, are collaborating a lot because big artists want to collaborate with the dance artists. But when we were going, it, it wasn't quite like that, really. But if we do get another sort of break with what we're doing i think the collaborations will definitely be coming with some vocalists and that. yeah it's definitely something we're open to not closed off to it's just it's just hasn't really happened uh yet you know but it, it could mm. do so 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 we, we might well see a niall rogers and en- enjoy track one day you never know well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible idea. It never made the enjoy sim. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean love love Niall. Yeah, it's great. But uh, yeah, there you go. So 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 I mean the, the new the new songs then, um is is that the, the, the hidden gems or is the hidden gems the collective? No, this this um, album here is called Collected. Collected, ten, yeah. Collected. Collected, okay. Yeah. Ten tracks, white label, uh, white vinyl. Um, and then after this point, we're going to Hidden Gems 1, uh, which is a four-track EP. And then following that is Hidden Gems 2, which is another four-track EP. So that'll be the um, that whole clearing up any tracks from the past kind of thing. Yeah, there won't I mean, be any more hidden gems after that. It's just a two two part thing. So uh, eight tracks in total. And so, I mean, what, what about what's your you, you guys' thoughts on remixing? Because I, I'm always fascinated when it comes to to you know a group like yourselves. Uh, you know, I mean, I take it you must have been inundated with re, remix requests. Can you use remix or track? Can you do this or vice versa? People coming to you going, well, we we we'll remix you what's your your general thoughts on that i think if it's a great track um, and you're given great parts then it can be quite an enjoyable process if you've got tricky parts and they're, they're difficult to sort of fit into you know our productions then it become a bit of a nightmare and then you know you become conscious of time ticking by and and you, you sort of you, re- you regret the, the decision of getting into the remix but but, uh, you know, it can go either way. And, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, it all depends on the raw source of material, really. But we're quite discerning on what we would, would want to remix now, I think. Um, I mean, we did, we did Annie Lennox back in the day, didn't we? We did a Little Bird track, which was a, we couldn't really see how it would fit into the scene we were in, but we got given it a name like Annie Lennox. We were sort of thinking, oh, we just have to do this, but it ended up like quite a tricky thing for us to do. But in the fullness of time, actually, it had a lovely little character about it, that that record, what we came up mm-hmm. with. We didn't really see that at the time, but yeah. So it was okay. Is, is, what, what's been the pinnacle for 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 you, Nigel, in in the music industry that that, that you've been in? I mean, you know, again, you've been in it a very long time. What's been what's been your pinnacle moment for you? I mean, was it enjoy, or has it been a personal success, or? 
Um, I think, you know, they've, uh, I've done, I've sort of been quite happy with the, some of my achievements over the years, you know, um, the, from Enjoy and gone on to do other things and work with some big people and had some quite big releases. Um, and I, I just sort of think that in the fullness of time, um, I sort of like come back to to sort of enjoy as being like my kind of the the core thing that I love the most, you know, uh, it, just because it, it it was formulated and crystallized in such a special time in itself. And um, I think together, Mark and I work really well. You know, we we sort of now understand each other a lot better than we did back then. I don't think you've got like we, we were too fiery, you know, young men in, in, with with ideas, and you know that can be difficult to manage. I think now we're, we're a lot calm, <laughs> obviously have to be, but um, we, we we can sort of communicate, you know, instead of shout now, which is great. And um, yeah, so so yeah, I've had great things. I've I've, I've seemed to have sustained a thirty year you know career in music. Um, work with great people every day is a different challenge um with stuff i'm still learning every day you know that I'm, i can't make out I, i'm not i still encounter problems in the studio and things you have to deal with you think you've got it nailed and you you, you haven't um and something it takes a lot of working out to get right which is the beauty of being in this industry really there's always a different challenge every day and different people to to work with and what have you but uh yeah, yeah amazing i mean so what, what about you mark yeah well the enjoy thing was um very successful and that's appearing on top of the pops uh twice was probably the pinnacle i think because it's you know from when we're in the, in the 80s when we were kids watching great bands on top of the pops it was like you know wow that's what's it's something we would, would like to achieve and we did so that was um, fantastic. And, you know, I loved, used to love the trips to America and these exciting cities and whatever else. But um, so I, I believe, as Nigel said, that's probably the pinnacle of what we, we were doing. Um, but, you yeah, know, yeah, I've, I've been involved with different things and lots of music for television over the years. And uh, but that's, a, that's a personal thing. And there's no nobody really knows that, you know, there's no um, artist attached to it at all. It's all background stuff, but it's all very enjoyable. And it's um, it's a relaxed way of coming into the studio and, and working kind of in your own time, really. I kind of went more that direction. Nigel preferred to deal with clients and sort of like... Uh, and, and people you know saying right this needs to be done by five o'clock I, I prefer a more laid back, back approach about things but um but yeah i think we both probably agree that enjoy has been probably the pinnacle and hopefully um there's going to be some more great stuff coming from us i think just being won over by certain stories from fans and stuff like that i think even for i didn't realize back then quite you know and, and nobody realized what sort of impact all of that movement or you know our band would have had on people but over the times we've had sort of stories where people have you know got married to anthem and you know like just like how much it's lifted people's lives and and not only that track but just like you know what we did the live shows that they had a very special night and people remember certain events that we played at and uh that that's that's been um quite quite sort of humbling and uh it, and makes makes what we did very special um and i think that's worth um completing almost like making it full circle hence what this release is all about and um yeah i mean i mean I, I, i'm blown away that you guys are are still still <clears throat> putting stuff out and, and, and about to put this out because i, I think it's I think it's more important for the fact that i mean i mean you are a sound of a generation and 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 you know it, the music today isn't the same as it was, you know, I mean, and let's be fair, it's, it's, it's moved on, it's changed. And I think a lot of people certainly in, in uh, that, that time frame would love to hear more enjoy, would love to hear more of what you guys were going to do. So I think this is a, 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 just an incredible project. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's no, no, but, but I mean, I mean, genuinely, I, I will definitely be buying a white vinyl. But, <laughs> but because I think this is the thing is it, it's it's just down to the, um, you know, the, the whole concept that you've put together, kept it real, 
Um, and, and, you know, again, I, I, I call it courage because if I had been you guys, I would have sold out. I think, you know, I think, I think after Anthem, I would have sold out. I would have, I would have, you know, there would have been an album of vocals and that would have been it, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, and, 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 you know, so, I mean, I, I see the courage and, and, and I don't think I could, I could have, I, I would definitely not have been that brave. Um, so, I mean, I take my hat off to you for, for, for staying true to that. But what I was going to ask you guys, because it's a very important question. I always ask every guest that comes on because as I say, you know, we've got a large database, 30,000 music students around the world that are that tune in, get sent the, the, the video, sent the podcast because they're coming into the music industry. They're learning their craft right now. What advice would you give? Something maybe you've learned along the way. I Just one got, little piece of magic, little pocket of magic. You've got to be proactive. You've got, to, especially in this day and age, you've got to get your stuff out there and heard um rather than sitting on it or something like that so that would be my advice um but yeah get, get make sure you're getting your stuff onto all the platforms don't be just... afraid to break the rules that's what i would say just try and be don't just like listen to genres and go i've got to do something in that job. bust the genres up a bit you know straddle the divides of different genres and and be unique and just be true to yourself i don't don't sell out and don't try and do things just for money or whatever just just really try to be true to yourself and and write what comes up and if you like it go with it whatever but yeah. thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate it it's thank been you amazing. thanks mate. It's been a lovely interview thank you very much thank you guys thank you nigel thank, thank you very much cheers, cheers thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.